right, all right. Welcome to Investment Banking Insights. This is the only show dedicated to helping you learn both the technical and the non-technical aspects of the investment banking process. Hello, my name is Alex Mason, and I'm so grateful that you're here with me today because we're going to be talking about something that is important to understand the equity value of a corporation called the fully diluted equity value. Specifically, we're going to be talking about something called the treasury stock method. So let's go ahead and go to the whiteboard. I want to work through an example with you so you know how to calculate fully diluted equity value using the treasury stock method. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to make some assumptions for this problem. We're going to assume that let's say you have 100 shares outstanding of a business. And remember, a share is just a piece of the company, a piece of the equity. And then we're also going to make some assumptions that each share is trading at $10. We're also going to assume that there is something called options. So the company has some options that are open, let's say, for example, for employee compensation. So let's say that there are 10 options that exist and these can be exercised at $4 per share. So what we want to know is what is the fully diluted equity value? Okay. So the first thing that we need to do is understand what the basic equity value is. And the basic value is very simply the amount of shares outstanding multiplied by the value of those shares. So very simply, that's just 100 shares times $10 per share, which gives you $1,000 in equity value. Now that's pretty simple, right? But we wanna know this fully diluted equity value. And by the term dilution, what I mean is that if all of the options, all of the things like restricted stock units, all of those things that could become equity were made into equity, what is the total equity of the company after accounting for those changes? So let's go ahead and see what happens. So first of all, we start out at 100 shares outstanding. And let's say that that these option holders, the people who own the 10 options, they want to exercise those options. And this makes sense in this example, because if they can convert at a price of $4 per share, and the market price of these shares is $10 per share, they're what's known as in the money, meaning that the value that they get by actually making the transaction happen is positive. If the market price of the shares were only $3 per share, well, they would never exercise these options, right? Because they have to pay $4 to convert these options into stock, but it would only be worth $3 per share. So they would never do that. That's out of the money. So in this case, we have an in the money situation. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to assume that these 10 options get converted into shares. So we start out at 100 basic shares outstanding. That's our starting point. And then these 10 options get converted into new shares of stock. So that gives us 10 new shares from options. Okay, and so that gets us to 110 shares outstanding, but we're not done yet because we have to account for something else. So we want to know the fully dilutive effect of this process. Now, when the option holders converted their options to shares, they paid $4 per share to convert those 10 options. So the company received 10 times four or $40 to create those 10 shares. Now, what we can assume is that 
the company is going to buy back as many shares as it can out of the newly shares it created in order to essentially account for this dilution. So if the company is getting $40 from the option holders and the market price of these shares is $10, then that means that the company can take those $40, divide it by $10 per share, and that gets you four shares that the company can now buy back. So there's 100 basic shares outstanding to start with. 10 new shares are created because of the options, and then four shares are bought back using the funds that were received by the company from the option holders. And so if we just add all of these things up, 100 plus 10 minus 4, we have 106 diluted shares. And the question that we started with was, what's the fully diluted equity value of the company? If we take this 106 diluted shares and multiply it by the current market price of the company, which is $10 per share, what are we going to get? We're going to get $1,060 is the fully diluted equity value of the corporation. And so that's how you do it. Effectively, you start with the basic amount of shares outstanding. You account for the options in terms of how many new shares are going to be created by the options that are in the money. And then you're going to calculate how much money in terms of dollars the company gets from this transaction. And then how many shares can they actually buy back from the amount of money they got as part of that transaction based on the current market value. When you account for those things, you get the fully diluted shares and multiplying that by the market value of the shares gets you fully diluted equity value. All right, so that's what we got for you today here on Investment Banking Insights. I'm so grateful that you're here and I'm so excited that you're gonna join me here on the next one. All right, I'll see you there. Bye.